Thank you all for being here. Uh, this is kind of just a, an introduction presentation, an int introductory presentation to kind of expose you all to what is physical medicine and rehab, what is pain management, what do we do. A lot of people don't even really know that this is a specialty in medicine. But um, honestly, the, the overall goal is to improve quality of life and function, um, and a part of that is reducing somebody's pain, which is why we, uh, we both did a fellowship in pain management on top of our training. Uh, so what is pain? Pain is a localized or generalized um, uh, unpleasant bodily sensation or complex sensations that cause mild to severe physical discomfort, but also emotional distress. And it usually results from a, some sort of bodily disorder, some sort of injury. Um, it can be influenced by biological, environmental, and psychological factors, as I'm sure most of you know. Um, just some quick statistics. 10% of the world's population suffers from chronic pain. And interestingly, in the US, actually 20% of the USA population suffers from chronic pain. That's about 50 million people, and that's actually a pretty conservative statistic. It's probably higher than that. Um, back pain is the second most common symptom. Um, that patients go and see their primary care doctor for. Pretty much everybody, most of us in this room, will experience back pain um, in some form or another at some point in our life. Uh, appropriate pain management requires a multidisciplinary approach, so um, that includes different kind of therapies that we'll kind of touch on in a little bit, different kind of medications, overall well-being, different kinds of vitamins and supplements, and holistic treatments. We'll kind of touch on these. Okay, so um, we'll kind of break up um, how we approach pain management. We can uh, approach it ph pharmaceutically, so with medications or non-pharmaceutically. Pharmaceutically being um, medications such as topical medications, different kinds of gels and creams, oral medications, which are pills or tablets we take by mouth, or actually injectable medications. Uh, Non-pharmaceutical um, approaches to pain include different procedures, um, that we'll talk about some, regener some regenerative medicine, uh, different kinds of therapies, supplements, holistic treatments, and overall wellness. So pharmaceutical treatments, uh, topical medications, um, we have anesthetics. I don't know if any of you have heard of lidocaine cream, lidocaine patches, you can get that over the counter. That is a common anesthetic topical medication. Um, it's pretty beneficial for for like skin pain or any kind of superficial or n not deep pain, so something that's close to the skin, so that cream or a topical can penetrate, you know, it doesn't penetrate very far, so maybe a centimeter or two. Um, different kind of NSAID creams, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory creams, um, like Voltaren gel, I'm sure some of you have heard of that, or it's also Diclofenac gel, Voltaren is the brand. Uh, that helps with uh, inflammation and helps decrease the inflammatory response. Again, we use this for more superficial types of pain, something closer to the skin, maybe neck pain or a joint pain. It's good for knee pain, things like that. Um, and we also prescribe compound creams. This is so the other two are over the counter. Actually, the Voltaren gel just became over the counter recently. Um, and the lidocaine cream is over the counter, but the compound creams are um, medical grade and those need a prescription. Uh, those can be a combination of things, a combination of neuropathic medication, uh, anesthetics, um, so like uh, nerve pain medication that's a controlled substance, they can actually compound that into a cream instead of taking it orally. Um, different kind of oral medications that we prescribe. Tylenol is the brand, common brand name that we use here in the U.S. Also, uh, acetaminophen is the actual drug name. Um, just some quick facts. I'm not actually giving any medical advice, but just some quick facts maybe to keep in mind. You don't really want to exceed three grams of Tylenol um, a day if you are taking it. Um, and you know the extra strength Tylenol tablets are 500 milligrams, or the regular Tylenol tablets are 350. So th something just to keep in mind if you are taking Tylenol. Um, and if you have any kind of liver disease or liver issues, you don't want to use Tylenol. In general, again, not offering medical advice. This is just a very general statement. Uh, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Um, those are things like naproxen, which is the brand name Aleve, ibuprofen, which is Motrin or Advil, or Celecoxib, which is uh, branded as Celebrex. Um, again, kind of a quick and fast rule. You don't want to use these if you have any kind of kidney disease or stomach ulcers. 
And then there's also nerve pain medications that we prescribe to help with not only nerve pain, so if you have like, you know, shooting pain coming from the neck into the arm or in the back going into the leg, but also for chronic pain. It um, doesn't have to be a pinched nerve. For chronic pain, we sometimes use this as well. Um, gabapentin is, uh, is the, the medication, also known as Neurontin. Pregabalin, also known as Lyrica. Um, even duloxetine, uh, which is Cymbalta. It's actually um, kind of more known as an antidepressant medication, but we do not use it for depression. It actually uh, does very well with nerve pain and chronic pain conditions. Um, and then uh, other types of medications that we use are injectables. So, yes? How about Ropinerol? Ropinerol? Uh, that's usually for restless leg syndrome. Uh, I've n I don't use it for pain. It can be, it can be for, for leg discomfort if you do have like a restless leg or leg cramping. Um, but I don't, I don't generally prescribe it for the majority of our pain conditions. That's very specific. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, injectable medications like epidurals or you know what most of us know to be as cortisone shots. Can I get a cortisone shot in the neck or a cortisone shot in the back? Um, we, uh, Sean and I, do those types of uh, procedures for radicular pain, sometimes back pain, shooting into the leg, neck pain, shooting into the arm, those kinds of things. Um, NSAIDs, you can also inject those, um, like Toradol injections, it can help with, uh, with pain overall. Um, hyaluronic acid is a gel injection that we use. It's a, it's a lubricant, basically when our joints over time with arthritis wear and tear, the, the fluid in our joints starts to decrease, especially in our knee, sometimes in our hip. Um, so this is like a, a synthetic form similar to the gel that our own body makes, but we start to lack that over time. Sometimes those gel injections can help with joint pain. So sometimes, I guess, once we've tried those cortisone gel injections, you know, conservative management, um, different procedures that we can do when other things fail are things like spinal cord stimulators. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of a spinal cord stimulator. Does anybody know what a spinal cord stimulator is? Yeah. So um, what that is is basically we, you know, we would take basically a small string and guide it up the, the back part of your back, you know, under X-ray, and that spinal cord stimulator um, gives like stimulation that you really most of the time can't feel, but that stimulation basically beats the pain signal. So if you're having pain in your back the stimulator will send signals faster than the pain signals from your joint or your back travels to kind of block out um, the pain signal. So that's an interesting, you know, an interesting um, uh, procedure that we do. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that you can try, I mean, at your doctor's discretion, you can try it out um, for five days. It's a relatively safe procedure if you get, you know, significant pain relief in the five days, then you proceed to an implant of the stimulator where basically instead of having the wire stick out of your back, they bury the wire with a generator kind of in the bottom of your, above your buttock area. Is that actually for spinal cord damage? It's for pain. It's not going to like regenerate your spinal cord or help fix anything. It's purely for pain management once everything is, has been exhausted. It's not, you know, it's not something we jump to. It'll be after everything else fails. Same thing with a perif peripheral nerve stimulator, same concept, but we can put it in different joints, different areas. If the knee is hurting, you can put a stimulator there. Um, uh, other things, uh, regenerative medicine, I don't know if anyone's heard of platelet-rich plasma. Uh, this is more of a regenerative medicine, which is thought to kind of fix some of our you know, tendons or our joints where we take our own blood or the patient's own blood and we spin it and then we just take the, the, the PRP part, is, which is the part that has all the healing compounds of our body and then we would inject the patient's own healing, um, part of the healing part of the blood into a tendon, for example, if there's a tear or um, another painful area. Do insurance generally cover that? No. Yeah, that some, some are starting to cover parts of it. That's good to know. Mostly for joints. Uh, nothing really in the spine yet. 
but some are starting to cover it for joints. Okay, partially. Yeah. Most is still considered experimental, but some we've done for patients recently, we've sent a claim to the insurance and surprisingly we've gotten back actually um, some, some from the insurance company. And um, stem cells, that's another, um, I don't personally do them, Sean has done them before, um, but that's another kind of treatment that, that is offered um, from some providers. Um, and therapies, um, physical, occupational therapy, very important at least to kind of develop a good home exercise program. Um, make sure you're doing your exercises appropriately because um, we know we can cause damage if we're doing exercise but we're doing it the wrong way. We can be, you know, causing harm sometimes. So it's good to develop a home exercise program. Um, mental health, we know that that contributes significantly to pain. Um, different supplements. THC, CBD, those creams are becoming more popular. There's, you know, various conflicting information about how effective it is. Um, different vitamins, antioxidants, minerals. A holistic approach to, to pain, there's acupuncture care, um, chiropractic care, massage, osteopathic manipulative medicine, OMM, which some DO doctors perform. So if you ever see the, the letters DO behind somebody's name, they have at least been trained in OMM. Some practice, some don't. Um, nutrition, uh, sleep hygiene, very important. Exercising uh, consistently, very important. Uh, meditation can also be very helpful. So that was really it, kind of uh, through a lot of information kind of quickly if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, um, this is, yeah. So, you know, as, as pain doctors, um, but our initial, our residency, our training was in physical medicine and rehab. Our ultimate goal is to improve someone's daily function. So regardless of what their diagnosis is, what their difficulties are. Our goal is to improve those challenges to allow them to function independently as possible. So with a lot of this stuff, Rachel went over, uh, interventional procedures, medications. Yeah, obviously the goal is to improve someone's pain, but ultimately the goal is to improve their pain so they can function better. So we can see the same problem come into our office. Call it back pain, it's the most common thing we see, but everyone's, treatment plan is going to be very different based on what they've done before, what their examination is, what their imaging shows. So we have this, the, these multiple options that we have to treat patients, but the most important thing we always do first is try to figure out where that person's pain is coming from. So it's the patient's history, it's the physical examination we do in the office, it's any imaging or testing we get to try to further decide what the diagnosis is, is the best way for us to develop the best treatment plan we can for that individual patient. All right, well, thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah.